D2 year of dental school is probably one of the most challenging years that you're gonna go through in your entire dental school education. You're gonna be tested academically, mentally, and physically in ways you've never been tested before, and it's honestly gonna be quite stressful. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over everything that I went through in my second year and what you can expect from yours when you get to that point. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to another One Mission DMD video. If you're new here, my name is Teham and I am a third year dental student aiming to make your journey in and out of school a success while learning a thing or two along the way. Timestamps for the video are going to be right over here, so feel free to scroll along through any part of this video that you think is going to be most beneficial to you. No matter where you end up attending dental school, the structure of each of the years is almost the same no matter where you go. The first year is very heavy on the science didactic coursework, whereas the second year is a lot more hands-on than the first year. If you're about to start your first year of dental school, go ahead and check out this video where I actually went over everything you can expect from your D1 year. It's actually been doing quite well, so definitely go ahead and check it out. Hold on though, be sure to like this video, please. It helps a lot with the algorithm for these videos to be pushed out to people that can really benefit from it. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Second year is very interesting because not only are you gonna be learning everything you have to do hands-on on actual patients, but you'll also be learning all of the science didactic coursework that pairs into everything you're gonna be doing. And it's our responsibility as students to pair everything in clinic with what we've learned with what we're actually doing hands-on. Operative dentistry where we learn everything about fillings and restorations, fixed prosthodontics where we learn everything from crown preps to bridges and implants, dentures and everything that we need to do to make sure to help patients that are missing all of their teeth or some of their teeth, endodontics where we learn everything about root canals, and periodontics which needs to be evaluated because if that's not in check, none of the stuff I just said could even be considered. Now by the end of your first year of dental school, you should probably have a good idea in terms of how much time you need to be putting in for all of your classes and pretty much what needs to be done to get the grades that you need. And as soon as you figure that one thing out, you have a whole new challenge of dealing with the physical in-person lab work that you're gonna be doing almost every single day. But just because you're in the sim clinic a lot more than you were before, that doesn't mean you're done with all of your science didactic classes, as I said. So you're really gonna have to figure out a way to balance everything and I've said this before, you might be in head and neck and then you might also be doing a class two preparation. You have to evaluate yourself. Am I needing more practice with head and neck and studying or do I need more practice prepping teeth? And if you know where you fall on that spectrum, then you're gonna have to put in that extra time and allot it there appropriately to make sure you get the results that you need. Comparing both of these things with didactic coursework and simulation coursework in the sim clinic, you're definitely going to be in the sim clinic more though. So that's probably something dental students really look forward to because you know, everything you're going to be doing in practice is what you're going to be learning in the sim clinic. So that's something to really look forward to. And it really motivates students to, you know, push themselves and make sure they're doing good in everything that's going on in their second year. During your first year, you're finished with an exam. You pretty much sometimes have the day ending early, but in your second year, you take an exam and the moment you're done with the exam, you're going to the sim clinic. <laughs> and if you're in the sim clinic, all day, then guess what? The next day or someday during that week, you're gonna have an exam. So the moment you get home, you just have to kind of freshen up, relax a little bit, and then get to studying again. So that's gonna be pretty much, that's pretty much how my schedule was. I'd be in the sim clinic in the morning, and if I wasn't there the whole day, the rest of the day I'm just studying. And if I'm in the sim clinic the whole day from eight to five, then the only thing I'm doing after that is studying again for another test that day. You're gonna be very busy in your second year and you're gonna have something to do almost every single day. And it's very, so that's why it's very important to create a schedule. If you're in the sim clinic from eight to 12, put that in your calendar. And then from 12 to five, 
put in some studying time. So, you know, just figure out something and make a routine for yourself, but definitely have everything in a calendar. You can do it on a physical, like written planner. I personally use my Google calendar where a student actually in my class shared the entire school calendar with us. And then we can put things in there for ourselves too. So definitely have some type of structured, organized way of figuring out what your routine is gonna look like. And it's definitely gonna help you you know, keep track with deadlines and everything that's happening. Mental health is something that is really important in literally every level of academics. With dental school specifically, I can speak for it personally because I went through it myself, currently going through it right now, I mean, but you know, it's just something that I think people don't talk about. I actually made a video regarding mental health and dental school specifically, so go ahead and check it out if you get a chance. I really went over everything in there that I think I struggled with and how anyone can cope with it if they're going through anything similarly to that. It's something that really kind of puts you down and it makes you doubt yourself if you're even cut out for getting through the program. It makes you question if you were even accepted for the right reason and if you have the skills and the dedication to get through it all. And these things are quite dangerous because it can really affect your progress in the program itself. I know mental health is acknowledged, but I'm not sure if I can comfortably say it's understood. And it typically isn't the first thing that education higher ups typically consider when it comes to a student's performance. So. D2 year is quite challenging because of all the things I said, you know, physically, mentally, and academically. You're gonna go through things that are gonna be quite challenging, but the important thing is to notice if something's going on and figuring out how you can solve the problem for yourself. There's gonna be some way of figuring it out. If it's gonna be some type of therapy, some type of counseling, there's a lot of resources. Your school might even have these resources, and if not, then you might have to make use of them outside of your school. But definitely don't ignore them that's the most important thing now once you go through your d2 year and you kind of finish taking most of the classes that need to be taken including your lab work you're gonna have to start eventually taking preclinical competencies now what are preclinical competencies these competencies are designed for the faculty and the students to prove to yourself and to them that you can do clinically acceptable work and if you were to do this on a patient they could go home with it and have no problems everything you're going to be learning in your second year is going to be pretty challenging and because of that it's quite common for students to have to remediate some parts of these courses throughout their second year it might be a didactic exam it might be a simulation course it might be a progress exam in the sim clinic it could be anything the reason for this is because the faculty wants to make sure that the students are understanding everything that they need to know because these are things that we really need to understand when we're working on a patient. So that's why we're being graded pretty strictly with these preclinical competencies because it's more than just filling out an answer choice on an exam and it's more than just making sure your preps look nice on plastic. Everything goes together and at the end of the day, we're gonna be treating patients and you wanna make sure that you're doing it the right way and proving to yourself that you can do it. So any remediation that may come your way, I personally took it as an opportunity to tell myself, okay, Deham, you need to practice on this. You need to practice on your crown preps. You need to practice on your class twos because you're about to do it on real patients. So make sure you can do it. And if you kind of keep that positive attitude, it's really gonna help you moving along. And even more so when you're in the dental chair with the patient and having to do something that you've never done on a real person before. There's no better way to fix these things that need improvement than through remediation. It can help you a lot and it can even help with your confidence once you get to the main patient clinic. Once you knock out these preclinical competencies, your transition into the clinic is gonna come faster than you think. It's a very nerve wracking yet exciting time for dental students because they know that they're about to start getting ready to work on actual people. It's very common for incoming D3 students to have to go through this transitionary period into clinic before you're actually gonna start doing procedures on patients. 
And this is because the current D4s that are getting ready to graduate have to transfer all of their patients to the underclassmen. And then whatever process your school has, they're gonna divide up the patients between the third year students that are about to become D4s and you the D2s that are about to transition into their 30s. So this means you might not get a lot of restorative procedures to do from the get-go, but I promise it will get better. And with the transition process, you'll start getting to see a lot more patients and having a lot more procedures to do as the months roll along. Anyways, that's how my second year was, and I hope this video kind of gave you some insight in terms of what you can expect from yours. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.